Well, welcome, welcome to our to our new podcast. I'm I'm Dan. This is Leah. Hello. <laughs> this is the most awkward I've ever started anything. This is perfect. People who are who are listening to this episode, I really just hope that you're just getting everything you ever hoped that you could get from episode one of any podcast. Uh, people would know me as Danger from Snake Fist Explosion fame. Um, if you consider that fame, some some do actually. Some think that I fucking I made it big time. Uh, it's it, that's not the case. <laughs> Fifty thousand followers is not a small thing to say. I made it to YouTube mediocrity. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I get excited when I get like ten likes on a video on Instagram. Yeah. So, well, uh, so. Snake Fist Explosion, which became Danger Place VR, which uh, I renamed my channel just in time for my VR headset to break and to not be able to make any more VR content. Mm. Was Isn't that great? That's great. A dream. <laughs> That's the dream. You know, I've had podcasts before this. I I had the, the pre, most previously. Well, <laughs> actually, no. Most previously, the Dumpster Fire podcast. Uh, shout out to the dumpsters or the garbage is that is that who the listeners of the dumpster fire podcast are the they're the garbage that ca- that catches on fire <laughs> <laughs> and is that podcast now in the dumpster as well i think so yeah okay. <laughs> <laughs> i don't know where you would even find an episode of it to be honest uh but then I also i had the snake fist explosion video game podcast which had 24 episodes of which leah was on the last episode of it um and we talked about our uh, uh, our lives up to 2010. <laughs> yeah, 1998, 2010, 12 years. And I've had podcasts before that that nobody would know about, and I will not tell them about. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Have you had any secret podcasts? No, but now I want to know about yours. Let's I'm move really on. I'm really curious. Okay. <laughs> This podcast is brand new because because Leah and I, who are married, we're married. We should say that we are. We should disclose mm-hmm. our marriage. This uh, could make or break it, folks. I don't know. <laughs> you know, I, I think together. that there's a a lot of ways that we differ, uh, especially when it comes to entertainment. But one of the ways that we bond in a big way is zombie movies and zombies in general. I'm obviously more more of the zombie fan like i could watch a zombie movie every day of my life Uh, every day of your life pretty much i think i could i could definitely have like the walking dead just playing in the background of my life well for what it's worth i'd watch it i mean i guess we're going to probably because of this podcast but i'd watch it again just not every day yeah season 11's coming out Oh my god, my light just turned out and it scared the shit out of me. (laughs) What your light just turned out? Yeah, it's the old the old lamp that like has a bad connection. Anyways, that's neither here nor there. We're making a podcast about zombies. And the reason is because I'm writing a zombie book. I read a lot of zombie books. Do you know how many zombie books I've read, Leah? I'm looking at an outline of this podcast, so I do, but I'm gonna ask you how many, Dan? I don't know. I I think 50. I really don't know, though, because I've been reading. That's a lot. So I started reading zombie books back in 2006 uh, when I was in Afghanistan, actually. Uh, <laughs> long story short, I, f- I was in a, a CIA safe house in Kabul, Afghanistan, and there was this um, it was a bookshelf of like all these donated books because like people just bu- donate v- books to to uh the soldiers overseas and Mm. this thing was overflowing like nobody they didn't even bother putting the books on the bookshelf anymore the bookshelf collapsed and there was just a pile of books on the floor underneath the bookcase and i found this book it just kind of it was like staring right at me and it was called zombies spelled with an x um and uh and i read it and it was the first time that a book um, or zombies or any combination of those things uh, for years uh, gave me nightmares. 
<laughs> wow. I didn't know. We should definitely review that book. Yeah, it's point. not the best, but <laughs> but there's some interesting things about it. Maybe maybe I'll talk more about it at some at a, in a later podcast, uh, because this is the zombie book club where um, we are not just going to talk about books. That's definitely not it's the only book club where you sometimes the book is a movie <laughs> and probably I'm never going to read any of the books. Yeah. Leah, just, just to be clear, you've not expressed a huge interest in reading these books, <laughs> especially when no. I tell you how bad some of them are. <laughs> no, I plan to just live react to you telling me about the books. <laughs> It's interesting. And you're the perfect person for a book club, I'm realizing, because even movies, TV shows, like you are willing to stick through some like really fucking awful stories, hoping it will oh get better. God. It's true. You really are. Whereas <laughs> I'm like, if it's not good in the first 10 minutes, I'm on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes if it is good in the first 10 minutes, you're still on your phone. It's true. <laughs> I'll admit it. So that brings me to a very important question, Leah. Mm -hmm. What what is Zombie Book Club? <laughs> um, I think we'll figure that out together. But I just want to talk about zombie stuff with you and with other people who are equally interested, at least my level of interested. I bet you there's more people out there like you um, that are not getting enough zombie content. And also just like zombies have so much. Uh, there's about so much more than zombies. So I feel like this could be a podcast for anybody who's just interested, like I am in dissecting and overanalyzing all parts of humanity. Yeah, I mean, zombies, zombie, zombie movies are rarely about zombies. And that's the best part is that there's always something else that's underlying underneath it. Um, and the zombies are just kind of the background. They're, they're like a, an environmental hazard. Uh, yeah. And well, who are you when there are zombies? That's the question. Yeah. Who are you when the chips are down? Um, so we wanted to make Zombie Book Club because we wanted to find other people uh, other people like me, for sure, that have read some zombie books, hopefully, or some people that are like, wait, zombie books exist. What are they like? Are they like the movies? I I heard that World War Z was a great movie. That's exactly like the book. That's what I heard. Have you heard that? World, Leah? I have, but it's World War Z to be it's correct not. <laughs> it is <laughs> maybe the movie's world war z because it was made in the u actually is the author see there's the things we can find out in zombie book club who is the author i don't even know max what... brooks and are they american <laughs> yes uh oh, fuck. mel brooks's <laughs> son actually mel wow. brooks the filmmaker these are the facts I needed in my life. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll still call it World War Z because as a Canadian, it's required <laughs> for, for the international uh, audience of Canadians. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, all other Engl everywhere else that was colonized by uh, Britain. Yeah. Do Just you, the United States doesn't say Z. Do you remember Anyhow. the first time you were ever interested in zombies? Yes. And it's actually World War Z. And I was having this moment when you were saying that you got interested in Afghanistan, which was like 2006, right? Yeah. I think that I was interested in zombies before you, which I'm really, <laughs> really pleased <laughs> because I uh, was in my undergrad. Well, I guess it could have been. No, I feel like it was before 2006, maybe like a year ahead of you, 2005 ish. Mm -hmm. And I was at my friend's apartment and um, he had a book. That was called World War Z. And I, being me, picked it up and started reading it and then borrowed it and was obsessed shortly after mm -hmm. because I really liked the looking back on the end of the world when things had kind of recovered a little bit perspective. Mm -hmm. So that was my first, I think my first encounter with zombies, zombies other than like sort of the broader knowledge that they might exist in books and movies. World War Z, Leah. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Was made in 2008, so I win. What? <laughs> That's not how. Wait, that can't be true. Now, Max Brooks did write a book before World War Z called The Zombie Survival Guide, and that came out in 2006. Well, maybe, I guess I was old. Well, yeah, I was still in my undergrad in 2008. That would have been like my last year. Yeah. Okay. I, damn it. I was so excited about being the, <laughs> the first of the zombie game because I was thinking about this. As as a big zombie fan, uh, somebody who is a big enough zombie fan to read terrible, terrible novels about zombies, 
I've I've been on a constant search for a zombie podcast that I could listen to, uh, that I would enjoy. And I got to say, I have not found one. I've found lots that are zombie related pod- podcasts, but I've not found a good one. So my goal is to make a good one that I would want to listen to. How do you feel we're doing right now? Oh, so we're doing just, oh, the best. <laughs> <laughs> We're off to a great start. <laughs> Zombies would listen. Zombies will listen to this. I guarantee <laughs> they that. would come. They would come if they yeah. heard this. Zombies yeah. are real. I know. <laughs> so, and they listen to podcasts. They're real. They're out there. They're walking around looking for a podcast on their on their iTunes or their Spotify or wherever they listen to podcasts. And you know what else they do? What? <laughs> They definitely give a five star rating to whatever zombie podcast they're listening to right now. I mean, that's only the right thing to do. But maybe there's something behind this. Like, what if you put on every single zombie just like a pair of headphones and Mm. had really loud music? If they couldn't hear anything anymore, would we be safe? Yeah. You know what? That solves the zombie problem. What kind of music would you make zombies listen to? Uh, (laughs) Probably something like Beautiful Chorus. Very calming. Yeah. Maybe that'll fix them. Maybe they uh, they wouldn't be so mad all the time. What 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 do you want for the future? <laughs> is that a, a big question? Is that a narrow enough question for you? Uh, the end of capitalism. <laughs> no more war. <laughs> right. Yeah. Public uh, health care. I'd like Twitter to fail. Yeah. Yeah. I'd I'd like it if uh, Elon Musk's forty four billion dollar investment just was a burning crater in the ground. Not that I uh, am endorsing the fire bombing. T- Redacted. I got to edit this part out. <laughs> yes, you do. You get in real trouble, Dan. <laughs> I didn't say that. Nobody said oh. anything like that. Uh, my immediate future plan is to make episode two. You know how that would happen, though? How? The best, the best way, The best way for us to make episode two is for people to listen to episode one. And to know how, that they liked it. How many people would have to listen to episode one for us to do episode two? Two people? I'm going to say three. Okay. That's <laughs> our goal. I'm going to um, open up my Hannaford seltzer with some good audio for um, everybody. I'm going to drink this glass of water that's been sitting on my desk for a week. <laughs> I was thinking that you were not uh, mm, dog uh, hydrated down there. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, well, episode two will actually review something, which would be helpful to do the fun stuff that we want to do on here. And yeah, well, we do have some, some ideas. I think we should just pitch some of our segment ideas because we thought about it a little bit, despite what this podcast sounds like. We have put thought into it a lot (laughs) over Thai food. Usually I, so one, one of the segments that I think would be fun would be zombies in the news. The only downside is there needs to be zombie news. Uh, There's been quite a bit lately. Are we going to talk about that now? I, you know what? Good, good segue. <laughs> zombies in the news, Leah. Can you believe it? There's zombies out there and people are reporting the news on them. <laughs> did, did I mean, you you're know? the one who did the search alert, the what, the news alert with zombies. It's true. <laughs> the, there is a zombie virus. Have you have you heard of this or are you the one person on the Internet who has no idea? Okay, I'm pretty sure I can claim originator here. I'm pretty sure I sent you that meme. I think you did. About it on Instagram. <laughs> and I was like, we can use this for the podcast in the zombies in the news segment. So scientists were digging up holes in the ice, doing things that scientists do, which is besmirching the name of God with their science. Go Doing things that were never intended to be done. That's what scientists do, always in zombie movies anyways. Uh, But yeah, it's a 48,000 year old virus uh, that infects people and turns them into raving lunatics and undead creatures of the night. Did they call it a zombie virus because it really will make a zombie or did they call it? I know that sounds so stupid. (laughs) Or did they call it a zombie virus because it's like a living dead virus that was dormant? Yeah, I think it's just because it was it was uh, extinct for so long and now it's Mm. back from the dead. It doesn't actually turn people into zombies, even but. 
that doesn't stop people from thinking that it does. So there's been a lot of uproar about uh, releasing this zombie virus uh, onto the onto the masses. And of course, everybody, there's people that aren't afraid of zombies, but they are afraid of the fact that it's this old, ancient virus that we don't have antibodies for. Um, but at this point, it only affects infects amoebas. So I think we're pretty safe. It only infects amoebas. Yeah, it uh, infects amoebas. And that's it. <laughs> amoeba zombies. Are amoebas, by their very nature, kind of zombies? What do amoebas do? A little do? bit. They don't have brains. I don't, I'll, I guess amoebas are alive, right? Yeah. Aren't they our ancestors? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Well, I was thinking that because this is a science nobody podcast really knows here. if viruses are alive. Like they're, they're kind of alive, but they're also not alive. Nobody Wait, knows. what? Yeah, viruses. No, viruses are alive. Are you, are you sure about that? Great de- are you a this scientist? This is a great debate. No. <laughs> Did I marry a scientist? <laughs> Did I barely pass all of my science courses in high school? Yes. But... So I think the zombie, yeah, the zombie virus, if there were one, is some kind of sentience, right? Because they're always adapting and they're really interested in survival. True. Yeah, I think I I think the that they are there. There are characteristics that define a living creature. Like we can't like communicate with a virus, but it can exhibit behaviors that we associate with living things, like. The desire to survive, the desire to propagate their their species, uh, so on and so forth. But then there's also things that they do that um, are not indicative of a living creature, which I don't know what those things are because I I literally am just recalling this information that I read like ten years ago <laughs> from from the back of my brain, the back of my zombie brain. Well, it is a. I think it's a question that needs to be answered because I would think, like, when I think about zombies, they're animated by the virus. The virus is the, the living thing in them. Yeah, that compels them to eat brains and bite people. <laughs> like, I don't know. I'm on team. Viruses are sentient, and we should respect them and ask for their consent. Yeah, we should. We, we should. Yeah, we should try to communicate with the zombie virus. We should try to reason with it. Like, you know, we can't reason with zombies, but maybe that's just because we're not talking to the virus when the virus is confused. We should just talk to the virus. Go straight to the straight to the source. I feel like we're writing a zombie movie right now. This could be really good. <laughs> the virus is just misunderstood. It just wants to yeah. live like everybody else. I have more zombies in the news, Leah. OK, what else? What else is happening? Uh, there's, have you ever wanted to go to a zombie apocalypse training camp? I mean, I want to go to a survivalist training camp. Are there similar <laughs> activities at this camp? I don't know, Leah. Do you consider face painting your face like a zombie and then running around screaming <laughs> as part of a survival training? I don't know. That sounds way too much. Like what season is it from The Walking Dead where they like make zombie masks oh well i I think that was like nine and ten yeah i don't think that that's a necessary zombie survival skill so no (laughs) i was thinking more like how to make a fire and uh i guess i guess another skill that i'd want to learn is like how to add like really quickly um deactivate a zombie brain with various tools like swords yeah like the remote control um yeah so there's a (laughs) zombie apocalypse training camp in missouri Mm. Uh, where you can go for the weekend and they do teach you some survival skills. I'm not clear as to what those skills were. I would assume like, you know, how to like information about like how to store food long term and maybe like make a fire. I don't know, like some like some some things like that. Um but it did end with a bunch of kids painting themselves as zombies and then running around chasing people. So <laughs> Wait, this is for children or for adults? I don't know, <laughs> but there were, okay. the, but the people who, the only picture that the article posted was of like seven kids who were dressed up as zombies. <laughs> so I, there were kids present for sure. 100%. Okay, so is it cheating that I went to their website and I'm kind of curious which of these skills they would train that you think you're already really skilled at? Okay. Because they've got a few here. Hit me with it. So, okay. You've got 
eight options. So please pause before you. Well, let's just do one at a time. Where would you rate yourself on find and create shelter? Oh, I'm so good at that. Like, look, we live in a house. (laughs) (laughs) I'm really good at knowing what a house looks like and living inside of it and creating it. Okay. So that's not very helpful. What about using night vision and thermal optics? You teach us that. I mean, actually I trained in the army to use uh, night, uh, night vision goggles. Let me tell you a short story about my night vision goggle training. So okay. I, I was, I wasn't there for the first part of it. <laughs> no. I was off doing a different detail. Um, and I showed up when they get, were at the end, which was night vision driving. Oh, God. And I was the first person they put in a Humvee. So I climbed into a Humvee with night vision goggles on in the middle of the night uh, with a bunch of other people in the Humvee. And uh, we go out into the IUD desert in northern Kuwait. And we're just supposed to drive. They're training you in a, (laughs) wait, what? They're training you to use night vision goggles in the desert where there's IUDs. Well, this is in Kuwait. So like, this is, this is like, this is a part of the desert that's occupied by the army for the purpose of training um, near the border of Iraq. Okay. Okay. I feel better now. Yeah. It's not very nice. Yeah. I mean, but it is, it is a desert. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Yeah. So thing that most people don't know about night vision goggles is that uh at least the ones in 2003 uh didn't have depth of field so you couldn't judge distance also things that you couldn't do is look at something far away and then look at something close up like everything close up would be blurred or if you looked at something close up when you looked up to the away the far away part it would be blurry <laughs> and then you'd have to wait for it to focus, which took like 10 seconds. This does not go well with driving. I, wh- <laughs> what so, happens next? So I'm driving and the, the guy next to me just keeps telling me that I need to slow down, but I don't know what that means. I don't know how fast I'm going and I don't know how much what? I need to slow down. So I'm like, okay, sure. I'll slow down. And I slow down like two miles an hour maybe. And he just keeps on telling me to slow down but not being specific about how much I could slow down. Um, So I just keep on slowing down in like small increments. And then he panics and I look up ahead and I'm like, I'm like, Hey, it looks like we're getting close to that sand dune. And suddenly we hit the sand dune and launch into the air about 10 feet in the air and land on the other side of the sand dune. Like Humvees are not soft riding vehicles and the seats are basically just a boat cushion on top of a steel, uh, you know, shelf, basically. I feel like we just discovered a service connection injury with your tailbone. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> you should go tell the doctor that. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to do it. Free money. <laughs> <laughs> no, earned money from True. the fucking army. Yeah, they who owe has, me. Yeah, everybody. <laughs> they owe me for injuring Anyhow. myself. <laughs> But yeah, I, uh, I I launched the Humvee into the air because I thought I saw uh, a, a sand dune far away and it was actually right in front of me. And I was going like wow. 45 to 50 miles an hour. OK, so we're going to retake the using <laughs> night vision and thermal optics training if we go to this camp then uh, from that story. Yeah. Well, I, you think I they think can do better? <laughs> I you think do. they can Actually. jump a sand dune with <laughs> night vision uh, goggles? <laughs> I mean, not intentionally like you, Uh, but you know, that's interesting. I think I'm going to like this podcast because I'm going to get to learn things. I learned two things about you. I didn't know in the last half an hour. (laughs) Uh, Okay. Okay, Moving on here. We've got this one. I think you'd be really good at, but I don't know how to say one of the words. So I'm going to spell it. (laughs) Self-defense and M-E-L-L-E. Melee? Melee. Melee just means unarmed unarmed combat. But it says melee weapons. It says self-defense and melee weapons. So like a machete, a machete. Um, uh-huh. A knife, a stick, a baseball bat. Okay. Something that oh, you use good with your one. hands. Yeah. Oh my God. I would crush a zombie. <laughs> with- you know what? This is, this, this little quiz I'm doing with you impromptu is actually increasing my confidence in our ability to survive the zombie <laughs> apocalypse already. I'm only on number three. Okay. Um, how to use a crossbow. Yeah, I can use a crossbow. 
You know, funny thing about crossbows. I mean, we'll we'll get dive into this when I talk about things that I am I find upsetting about The Walking Dead. Uh huh. Daryl Dixon he uses a crossbow, right? Yeah. And everybody's you've, favorite. You've seen him reload a crossbow before, right? He pulls back. I mean, the I've string, never paid attention, but I guess so. Locks into yeah. place. He puts an arrow in. He's ready for the next shot. Uh-huh. What if I told you that's fucking impossible? <laughs> what do you have to do? Well, the the tension of the bow is so heavy, you could never pull it back with your bare hands. Mm. So there's actually either like a a thing that you step on that has pulleys, and you loop you loop some hooks on it that are attached to to ropes, and you pull the ropes up, and it pulls it pulls the string back. There's also like hand cranks that people use where you put it on like the 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 shoulder the the butt of the weapon and you hook a steel cable to it and then you crank it up and it pulls it back. But pulling it back, especially pulling it back with mm. one hand, Daryl Dixon would have to be the strongest human being alive. So in other words, it's not really a good what then I don't think it's that useful in in an apocalypse scenario if it's that hard to reload. No, I I, might, I actually wish that there was more, like, actual real bows in the Walking Dead series. Uh, they had them, like, later on when you go to Ezekiel's kingdom. Yeah. Um, but before that, the only other person was the governor's town. There was a woman who was on guard with, uh, I don't remember her name, the blonde woman who dies. Spoiler alert! <laughs> <laughs> From season, like... Ever. Yeah, season three, I think this is. Um, but anyways, she's she's talking up a big game like, oh, I was an Olympic bow shooter person. I can hit anything from any distance. And a zomb- one single zombie comes. Um, Andrea, that's her name. Yeah. <laughs> one single Andrea. zombie comes and she's like, I got this. She fires an arrow and it bounces off the zombie's head. <laughs> like- I mean, that's not her fault. Yeah, she, but it's, she aimed and she was correct in her aim. Yeah, but it should have worked at least as easily as Daryl's bow. Daryl's crossbow. Can we just have a quick sidebar there that, like, of course, the blonde woman had to explain how she knew how to use a bow. Yeah. She couldn't just use it. Well, then Andrea was like, it was like, I got this. And she jumps over the wall and stabs the zombie in the head. And she gets in trouble for that because you're not supposed to go over the wall, which is a good rule to have. Just saying. In the zombie apocalypse. Yeah. And okay. I won't even get started on stabbing zombies in the head. That's another episode entirely. That's a, that's a whole its own episode can of can of beans. <laughs> <laughs> a can of beans. It's a whole can of beans. <laughs> that's a great um, a great book title, too. OK, moving on. This one, I know you're good at it as well, but you I'll let you talk about it. Firearms training with live ammo. Yeah, I hope this is not for children. Sorry, the more I'm really reading this, I'm like, please let this not be for children. Well, I mean, I I I could make the argument that if you were going to do firearms training, uh, you know, if if you have plans in your life to do it, like starting young is not a bad idea because that's when you want to instill safety and responsible handling. Um, But no, you don't want to like just have a bunch of kids with loaded weapons with no instruction whatsoever, for sure. (laughs) No, but yeah, I'm assuming there's instructions. So I actually, you know, I really am. (laughs) I'm feeling a lot more confident in your survival. Yeah. Now, (laughs) firearms training with lime ammo. So far, um, I fail at all of these, except for maybe finding and create shelter, create shelter because houses, as Dan pointed out, there's lots of them. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) The next one is stay healthy now and then. What the fuck does it mean now and then? They're like a, (laughs) hyperlink to this there is you know what do you think you could stay healthy now and then yeah sure (laughs) i could give it a shot (laughs) i don't understand what does it mean by now and then do they mean like oh i get it they mean like be healthy now so that when you are in an apocalypse you can be healthy then i think this is probably like the biggest uh barrier of entry for anyone who wants to survive zombies is like if you're a person that has to see the doctor regularly or takes medication or re- needs procedures in order to maintain a normal, healthy life. Yeah. Uh, you're going to be really fucked when all of that goes away. 
I was thinking about this. Did I tell you about this or did I just think about it? I was thinking about So, folks, interesting fact about me. Fascinating. I have plantar fasciitis. It sucks. Yeah. Um, I'm sure people on here may have also had it or at least heard of it. And I was thinking about in the zombie apocalypse or any scenario where, I don't know, our entire civilization fails, which I feel like it will at any moment. I need to feed myself and like I have to walk around and forage all day. I'm mm-hmm. fucked. Yeah. Um, do you think that you'd be able to power through it? Like, obviously you're going to be in a huge amount of pain, but like when survival is on the ticket, uh, I imagine that you'd probably just, you'd just deal and do it. Yeah. I mean, the reality is I now have orthotics okay. and like 800 different devices that I'd have to carry around with me probably yeah. to help. When the orthotics wear out, that's the oh, end God. of the zombie apocalypse for Leah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is not, I will say this quiz is not increasing my own yeah. personal feelings of survival, but I've got a Dan. Um, you know, I yeah, used stay to, healthy now and then. I used to have a, a, a problem that would have made it really difficult for me to survive a zombie apocalypse. Actually, two problems. Huh. Uh, first is sleep apnea. Mm-hmm. I snored really loud. Those zombies, they would come for me if they heard me snoring, for sure. And they would. Sometimes they would I felt like a zombie trying to sleep beside <laughs> you and I would get blind rage. So, yes. Yeah. So if if I didn't have my uh, my CPAP machine, first of all, I'd be really grumpy and really tired. Mm-hmm. Um, and also I would snore a lot. So without that, I would not be uh, very useful in the zombie apocalypse. So I'd have to have access to like a small amount of electricity for sure. Like mm-hmm. I think if, you know, if we're talking about um, finding shelter, my, my best, my best option is to find a semi truck um, because that, that will allow me to run a CPAP machine. It'll also be a weapon and transportation. As long as you have fuel. Yeah. I think that's an interesting one, but you, I was, I mean, I was going much simpler, which is cause I also need uh electricity like charge my special laser tool i'm gonna get for my feet um, Leah needs to I laser my lasers feet. at her feet <laughs> it works all right it's a fda approved treatment anyways uh i would want to get like a little solar panel for yeah. sure yeah we, yeah you know i, I don't need a semi truck <laughs> i need a solar panel that's what yeah I need. and also like i need to stay healthy now and then i need a comfy bed like that's really mm, yeah. important oh my god the the beds that we would have in the zombie apocalypse would we would have sore backs all the time. <laughs> yes, definitely. Also, I can't run and neither can you really run. So yeah. that's a big de- like deficit for us. I really have to depend on my on my ability to smash zombie skulls. Because um, like, I mean, can I run? Yeah, if I need to, I will. I will run. <laughs> but uh, I'm like that. Uh, that part of uh, the song Country Boy Can Survive. He, uh <laughs> You can't make me run. I'm a country. I don't know that song. I can't can't run. (laughs) (laughs) They, 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 Uh, the the lyric goes, you can't starve us out and you can't make us run. And I always think about that. I'm like, is he suggesting that country boys can't run? (laughs) You should tell a country boy that and see how they should. I should. At a bar. uh, when everybody's drunk, it could be good. (laughs) Interesting. I should find Hank Williams Jr. (laughs) and tell him. That I can't think, I don't think he can run. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thing you'd say if you met him. I'd be like, you can't run. <laughs> Bet you can't. <laughs> but can you hide, right? That's the thing. We can hide. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. So there's only two more. Um, this is the one, this is the only one out of eight fucking skills that I think I would be useful for. And I'm mm-hmm. curious how you would rate yourself, but I think I'd be really good at building and leading my team. Yeah, How do you feel you, know you would be at building and leading your team? Leah, you are a powerhouse when it comes to building and leading teams. Uh, that's something that people don't know about you unless they know you. So you have like superhero level diplomacy skills. So Thank you. I'm obviously not going to be as good as you. But I, you know, I have been a leader before and I have a lot. I have a lot of. Uh, I put a lot of thought into what makes good leaders because I've worked for a lot of really shitty ones. Um, so I think, I think I'd be, be good. pretty good. I think that if anything, like you and I could lead really well together. Um, I mean, and you were the truck boss this year. Yeah, so, I was truck boss. <laughs> uh, with your crew, you know, you were the respected truck boss. So I feel like I feel like we'd be OK. 
Uh, very last one, which I know you have feelings about, we've discussed before, is the bug out bag and supplies. Mm. Where would you rate yourself there? Oh, boy. Uh, not doing so hot. I mean, I Don't do. Don't you have one, though? I do have one. So, I, OK, so I've got I've got first aid kits. I've got the semblance of maybe somewhat of a bug out bag. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's not a good one. And it's not one that I've put together recently with like the intention of having good uh, uh, bags for situations. There's lots of, there's lots of different bags. Like the bug out bag is the one that's talked about. Um, but really, you know, you need a lot of different types of bags. Sometimes you need a bug in bag because bugging out sometimes just isn't the option. Sometimes you got to bug in. Can I just tell you that my resistance to the bug out bag <laughs> is purely the name. I fucking hate it. I don't I hate the word bug out is so stupid. Can we just call it like the survive? I don't know. Yeah. Survivor well, bag. You know what? Zombie I, bag? So the people people who make bags like this rarely ever refer to a bug out bag. Uh, a lot of huh. times because there's there's such there's so many different types of bags. So like you might have an EDC bag. So your everyday carry like my backpack upstairs for work was my EDC bag because I had everything that I needed in a regular day. Which also hmm. included a first aid kit because, you know, as, as a truck driver, I was just out there in danger all the time of injuring myself and having nobody around to help me on a mountain where hmm. I have no cell reception. <laughs> uh, but also my lunch was in there. I, I needed lunch in my EDC bag. <laughs> a small toolkit. Um, a hmm. CB radio was in my EDC bag. It was a pretty heavy EDC bag. But that's just like the thing that you would carry has your everyday stuff in it like maybe a multi-tool like other people's edc bags would be much smaller like maybe their briefcase that they go to the office with is their edc bag and it has a peanut butter jelly sandwich in it and like the forms that they Ew. needed to fill out <laughs> at the end of the work day the previous day uh, and a laptop yeah. maybe i love um, working from home i don't need any kind of bag it's all here yeah like your phone is sometimes your edc uh, then there's like yeah. a 72 hour bag. Like what if, what if I'm separated from my home for 72 hours, here's everything I would need. And that's something that we, you might carry in your car. And then there's like, there's like, uh, the, the, the bag that people call the bug out bag is called the, I'm never coming home bag, which I can't remember the acronym for it. Never coming home. And Net, nig, nig, no, okay, I could, I don't remember it, but <laughs> but like the idea of that is it's what you would need if you were going to leave your house and plan to never come back to it, or at least not in the foreseeable future. Um, See, I don't. That's probably also why I don't like it. I feel like we, you know, we have the house that we have in the woods with the express intention of surviving an apocalypse of any sort. And I was actually looking at this list, and you know what's missing from it is like food. I don't know. That might be an important zombie <laughs> apocalypse fucking skill, but yeah. I guess they wanted to keep it at an even eight. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. And, and this is also like, like skills like that. Like these are things that you can do that don't, that just, you know, they're simple. They don't require like a lifetime of dedication to learn. Whereas like mm. learning how to grow a garden is kind of difficult. Yeah. Or like you with mushrooms. Yeah. But if you were somebody that really knew how to grow a garden, you'd be very valuable in a post-apocalyptic society. Well, I ate a lot, or not, not ate, I uh, grew a lot of broccoli that the worms ate this year. So you fed the worms. they were happy. I did. <laughs> they were a version of zombies for me. Fuck, they just kept coming. Yeah, those worms um, were zombies. Cabbage worms, man. You got to have the netting. That's my hot zombie tip for you all if you're in an apocalypse. <laughs> Make sure you net your broccoli. Otherwise, the worms, well, I mean, I guess, in a, you know what? Never mind. In an apocalypse, I would eat those worms. Yeah, you know what? Yeah. Hot tip from Leah. Uh, <laughs> hot zombie survival tip is grow broccoli. And if worms eat your broccoli, eat the worms. <laughs> yeah, I mean, broccoli is already high protein. Worms, I'm sure, are very high protein. Broccoli is a really good, a really good thing to grow. It's, it's yeah. a superfood. That and, it also grows late into the season. Yeah, broccoli and, and potatoes, you can't go wrong, really. Oh, my God. That's a great zombie menu, broccoli and potatoes. <laughs> it, you know, I... I, you know, I could do that. I could eat broccoli and potatoes every day if I needed to. Yeah. 
can of chickpeas, get some salt, a little bit of spices in there. Be Step so two, good. grow chickpeas. <laughs> oh, there'll be cans of chickpeas everywhere. We've got a lot True. of dried chickpeas. We actually do have a lot of beans saved yeah. um, for apocalypse scenarios. So we are prepared that way. Beans are basically going to be the primary diet of survivors in the, the post-apocalyptic society. They should be the primary diet now. Just saying. True. You beans know. are good. Eat beans. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, other segments <laughs> that we have ideas for the survival tip. We just did one. <laughs> yeah. Grow broccoli. <laughs> eat the worms. Yeah. Grow broccoli. Eat worms. Search for Good beans. <laughs> <laughs> Chickpeas are everywhere. Just go look for them. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I want to come up with fun names for these types of things. But uh, one of these is we can talk about the various tropes of zombie entertainment you know like like stabbing zombies in the head with a folding uh knife a folding pocket knife that's, a that's not realistic uh no <laughs> okay Good to know yeah i i could talk i could talk more about that but uh that that could be another episode mm. um also we you know, leah and i like to point out all the misogyny of everything that we watch but uh in the in the zombie universes uh it seems it seems to be ever present and also ever unnecessary yes i will also hold back on that the only thing i'll make a comment on right now is like why are all the women's armpits shaved why <laughs> who has time for that because because leah if you're running away from zombies and they uh -huh. try to grab at you and they grab a handful of armpit hair that could be your demise so you'd also shave your armpits in the zombie apocalypse yeah i i uh i do you do shave your armpits? Sometimes. And not what? all the time. I this is my third new thing about you today. <laughs> I you know, I've I've always had an armpit hair phobia ever since I was a teenager. Wow. Uh, I'm not afraid of it, but I you know, I my brain kind of associates it with um with poor hygiene. Mm. Um like to me, when when I look at somebody who has an excessive amount of body hair, like I, I smell body odor in my nostrils. Wow, you've been indoctrinated by our hyper hygienic <laughs> culture. That's really well. Sad. I've also been around a lot of teenage boys that had like the, mm. the tufts that that stick out from under the like, like even though they have their arms down, you still see their armpit hair sticking out. <laughs> <laughs> and in my experience, their armpit hair has been permeated with odor that it well, never goes away. Yeah, cuz they're not bathing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And also, also as a as a former um as a former boy <laughs> uh you know, I always I always had like excessive hair growth. It's something that I've never been able to take control of in my life is the amount of mm. hair that my body grows. Um and I would be one of those people that if I left it untamed, there would just be a fucking bush growing out from under my arm that sticks out even under my, it comes out of my, it'll come out of my sleeves, the sleeves of my shirt. <laughs> but what if like you embraced your Norse background and you let me like break it? Like, like Viking braids coming out of my Yeah. Armpits. Yeah. You can have like three distinct braids at least. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that sounds great. <laughs> I mean, that you know literally what? puts a bad do a taste in my mouth just thinking about it. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's one way to maintain it. In a zombie apocalypse where we don't have time all the time to shave or you don't have a razor, I would braid your armpit hair for you. <laughs> well, thank you. That's, You're welcome. That's Anyways, why I married you. <laughs> <laughs> True love. So you were, I, I uh, the armpit, I didn't, that did not realize that would take us so off track. What were you going to say about segments, Dan? Oh, well, uh, you know, I'd like to have better names for these things, but that's, that's one of them. Also, mm -hmm. um, we like to talk about... The stupid things that certain characters do and how we would oh do it God. better. I mean, <sighs> yeah, th this has the potential for dozens of episodes. Like we could just go off on just The Walking Dead alone, which I would argue with The Walking Dead is one of the best zombie things available, like especially in a long form. But it's it is not without its problems. No, I mean, they like they have to have their characters do stupid things for the show to continue. I mean, that's kind of like every TV show to some so. degree. 
I but I do so. like believing I would do things better in an apocalypse, even though it's probably not true. I'd probably die really fast without you. That's the truth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> to, to be fair, most people will die really fast in the zombie apocalypse. Uh, I, mean, I mean, before you, my plan was always to just... Um, well, I'm realizing this might not be a safe for a podcast, but I would uh, in a zombie apocalypse, I would consider continuing. I'll put it that way. I, I think with you and actually doing a little quiz, I'm more confident to stay and like give it a try. But yeah, I, would I was like on my you own. To, I don't I'd, know. I'd like you to not end your life if you see a zombie. Yeah. And also just an FYI, if you are um, having thoughts of suicide, you should text 741741. I'm pretty sure that's the text uh, line for people who are struggling. Oh. Just saying that. Yeah. I'm going to Google it to make sure. And also, you know, it if it's because of zombies, just know that you can, it's okay to kill them. That's an important point. Yeah. I mean, we'll get more into the killing of zombies and where that lies in morality, for sure. That's something I think about quite a lot. Every day, in fact. Usually when I'm putting dishes away. <laughs> <laughs> These are the ones where I'm like, hey, Penny, for your thoughts, Dan. <laughs> I'm like, have you ever thought about maybe we shouldn't be killing zombies? <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's, that's a lot. There are a lot of shows and movies that deal with that conundrum, though. And like all the ways people navigate that, like when they used to have all the people in the Herschel had all the people in the barn. Yeah. Isn't... Oh, man, the name Herschel's been ruined for me. I just realized that. Yeah. I'm going to always think of Herschel as uh, Herschel from The Walking Dead now. I've never Anyhow. heard. I've never seen another person named Herschel before. Herschel Walker. Yeah, just that's it. That's yeah, the but there's one. also Hersh the other. Well, that's what I'm saying. The only other Herschel I ever knew oh, was wait. like sweet old Herschel. Wait, Herschel who Walker. Lost a limb. I never made the connection. His name's Herschel. Yeah. And his last name is Walker. Whoa. This is Herschel a sign that we're Walker in a matrix. Is a zombie. Wow. Which explains why he would want to be either a vampire or a werewolf. Because that's anything a step better. up from a zombie. <laughs> It's true. Mind blown. Yeah, you heard it here first. <laughs> I never, the new zombies I never the news. made the connection. I the, Herschel Walker, like you know, sometimes you have you see people, especially in politics, that their first and last name kind of just meld together into one name. That's just who they are. Like if I if I met Herschel Walker in real life, I wouldn't call him. I wouldn't be like, "Hey, Herschel." I'd be like, "Hey, Herschel Walker," as is your name. It's true. Do you mind if I call you Herschel Walker? <laughs> Or do you prefer Mr. Herschel Walker or Dr. Uh. Herschel Walker? <laughs> Wait, what? Uh, he's, he he's probably thinks he's a doctor. Oh, OK. Anyhow, going uh, back to zombies, doctor the real that. ones. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Um, uh, what other what other segments were we the, talking about? The last doing? one that we brainstormed is called Recipe of the Living Dead. And these might be recipes mm. that we suggest people do in the event of a zombie apocalypse to... Uh, keep their morale or just to feed themselves easily. Um, Cause we were watching a, we were watching a TikTok on Instagram as we watch most of our TikToks. Uh, as yeah, as elder millennials, we do not actually have a TikTok. <laughs> there's a, there's a person she's called the black forager, right? Yeah. I think it's just black at black forager. At she's black amazing. Forager. It's called, and actually I don't know their pronouns. I mean, let's just go with mm. they, they're amazing. Uh, safe assumption. Um, yeah, <laughs> uh, it's called pine needle Sprite. And the idea is that you take pine needles, edible ones. Um, so know your pine needles, uh, and you put it in water. Is there sugar? I think there's sugar, yes. sugar, water, yes. pine needles, and you seal it in a mason jar and it ferments because there is yeast on the pine needles. Mm -hmm. So it naturally ferments from the yeast. And when you open it up, uh, you have something that is Sprite adjacent. Tastes kind of like Sprite a little yep, bit. Yeah, that's that's how they describe it. It sounds really good. I want to try it. Yeah, I want to try it too. Let's do it. Let's make you sure know what? we're not poisoning ourselves, though. Not just recipe. <laughs> okay, our next episode, whatever we end up talking about, we should also um, have made this, and we can give a quick review for folks yeah, to give it a try. Will review uh, we can do it. This potentially vomit-inducing <laughs> serum. <laughs> <laughs> we could though we could we could totally like review um apocalypse forager recipes and see how we go yeah um that's a good so idea we'll see maybe not the next episode but in the future i have one more that's not on our list that oh. i feel really strongly about uh, um hit me with it 
getting off in the apocalypse. You know oh, that I have a lot of right. thoughts about this one. How does Which, one again, get off in the apocalypse? When do they find I don't the time? Know. But maybe we can try and find it like when we watch the next movie or yeah. you can like tell me in a book, when would there have been time? Because again, if there's time to shave your fucking armpits, if I have time to shave my armpits, I'm having sex. Yeah. I That's mean, I'm saying. if if I had to, if I had to figure that out right now, I would have to look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Mm. Um, if you're too low on that hierarchy, it's not happening. Uh, there are other things well, that, uh, that take precedence like shelter and food. Uh, right in the middle is is love, so maybe that's that's about the time where you're trying to uh, develop those human relationships. But or uh, like maybe you're you're huddled somewhere in the dark and you're by yourself and it's nighttime and you feel like somewhat safe because you've got shelter and you're really sad and lonely and you're horny. Yeah, and so there's no just, porn. Yeah, the thing close that your eyes don't and talk pretend you're somewhere else. Enough is that there will be no porn in the apocalypse. Yeah, you actually have to use your own mind. Yeah, or uh, shadow puppets. <laughs> that could be that could be a segment in itself. It's like it's like how <laughs> porn in the apocalypse. How do you do it? <laughs> so like if you were if you were just friends, okay, together. Obviously, this is not you and I anymore. But like, say you and your friend, um, and you're both not sexually interested in each other. Making some assumptions here, are hiding together in the zombie apocalypse. One of you would take friend, take turns making a shadow puppet porn while the other mm -hmm. person jerked off. That's what you're suggesting because there's not enough hands. Yeah. <laughs> and again, Maslow's yourself. hierarchy of needs. Uh, at some point, you'll you'll be like, let's not use shadows anymore. We'll make regular puppets. You know, we, we have we have an abundance of paper bags. Let's make puppets. And then we're going to make these puppets fuck. Uh, well, if you have electricity of some kind, you could always go, like, go find an old porn video. I think. I think it could come back. It could be, but it, it would be a, it'd be a rare find in this day and age because not a lot of people have physical copies of porn. Yeah, I mean, there's a there's a few sex scenes in. Uh, well, there's more and more actually, but I remember the first one in The Walking Dead. I think it was the first one, which was when um, oh god, I forget their names. Main main wife, Lori. Who dies. Lori. Lori has <laughs> spoiler, sex with uh, alert. <laughs> Rick's <laughs> Rick's best friend. In the tent. Shane, yes. Shane, yeah. And that felt like very scandalous to me because it's a tent. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Having sex in a tent at the best of times is a very, assuming there are other people near well, you. Well, actually, I risky. think they did it in the ditch on the side of the road when they were on the way to Atlanta. And that's oh. how she got pregnant. But Lori, is... Lori and Rick hooked up when Rick found them in the tent. Oh, okay. I'm confusing things as I am. Also, you know, to do. Carl's like right there. Isn't that weird? Yes, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. But also, like, a little bit of pleasure in a really terrible yeah. situation would keep me going. So right, I get it. You know, back back like you know, a couple hundred or a thousand years ago or so, uh, having sex with people in the same room as your children wasn't considered weird. Yeah, that's, really. Because I mean, everybody I know lived that... in the same room. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe you just didn't have sex at night. I just, oh, wow, I never made that connection. I just assumed that if you were all sleeping in the same room with your family, that you would just not have sex there when you're sleeping. Yeah, or maybe it's just normal. Oh, wow. Yeah. Which uh, just, would would fuck me up, but... <laughs> yep. <laughs> you know, maybe it's different back then. Maybe there's other things to be fucked up about. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Hmm. Uh, something I would like to end the podcast with uh, every episode is I want to check in with myself on my work in progress, the book that I'm writing. Yes. Uh, I don't want to give too many specifics because, you know, I want people to read it <laughs> and I don't, I don't necessarily want them to know the whole story before it's finished. But at this point I'm at about 17,000 words. Um, That's a lot. I work on it in the winter. I have the winters off because I drive trucks for an excavation company. And when the ground is frozen, uh, we can't excavate. <laughs> so we take the winters off. Uh, and I'm totally okay with that because uh, all summer it's like 14 hour days and grueling. So the winter comes, I'm ready to uh, cook lunch for Leah and uh, cozy up next to the fireplace and just write about horrible, horrible, gruesome atrocities that zombies do to living people. 
<laughs> while listening to what what song it was that, that was like your number one on your Spotify rap this year? Oh, I don't know what my number one was. I think well, my it was number one, it was one was there. Poor Man's Poison. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm thinking about the one that's from the, what sound, was it 28 oh, from, Days Later yeah. soundtrack? It's it's by Godspeed You Black Emperor. It's called, now I don't remember what it's called. <laughs> Put in the show notes. Yeah. But anyhow, it's, that's it's, what he listens to all day while writing. Yeah, I've got a playlist of the most desolate, depressing, upsetting shit you've ever heard in your life. And I just have that on repeat and I'm smiling away. I'm just like, you should share it. Today is a good day. <laughs> you can make your playlist public. I don't know who else wants to listen to it and be depressed. Yeah. I won't you be. Know, I, but <laughs> You know what? A lot of people don't realize that podcasts have descriptions, but I will put in the description the link to my depressing playlist if you want to hear it. Uh it has other things from 28 Days Later. I'm also going to add... The music from Project Zomboid, which is a video mm. game that some people might remember. Um, but yeah, so my story, it's multiple points of view from groups of survivors that are kind of going to... They they all have their own story and they kind of come together in the end. Spoiler alert. Um, <laughs> takes it starts, it starts like... I mean, everything's subject to change. But right now I'm writing... Uh, linearly, I'm writing about a week before the zombie outbreak. So, like, imagine if you're mm. watching 2004's Dawn of the Dead, and you're follow you're following around the main characters for a week before you realize, oh, there's zombies. <laughs> uh, I just kind of want to like build up these characters and like give you a reason to give a shit about them because I think that's something that especially in zombie stuff like they they just kind of breeze over these people before the zombies uh so is if they die right away you don't you do not really you don't really care if they die yet yeah it's a very stephen king inspired way to write and i like it yeah because I, mean, I always like i read a lot the of the past king, so yeah well he's great um and it's and it has fast and slow zombies so if you're it's going to follow, for the most part, pretty traditional zombie uh, rules, which um, I'll get into in a later episode about how some some stories break zombie rules, and most zombie fans find that upsetting. And that's like the best way to uh, have somebody stop reading or watching your zombie thing is when they're like, but these ma these zombies cast magic spells. This is bullshit. I'm done. My reanimated corpses don't know magic. <laughs> uh, but anyways, that's that's my book. I've I've been working on it for two. Well, I mean, I've been wanting to write it for like 15 years. But the last two years, I decided I'm doing this. I'm doing. I'm making it happen. Uh, last, Sometimes last year I wrote 20,000 words. Then I deleted 10,000. And now I'm back to 17,000, so I'm doing good. That's really fast. And I will say, I occasionally glance over your shoulder because um, Dan has not let me read it yet. And it's really good. Also, oh, he writes really you. good poems. He wrote I, really yeah, good poem I have Apocalypse recently. I have been trying to branch out into poems because in general, I've never really gotten into poetry. I've read a lot of poems and a lot of times I read it and I'm like, I wish I didn't read that. That's this. This was really a boring poem, and I don't know what it's about. <laughs> <laughs> Did you feel that way about my university poems? I don't remember your university <laughs> poems, but your Even poems better. have always been very meaningful to me because they come from your brain. Mm. Um, I'm talking yeah. more about people that I... <laughs> oh, God. I hope, I hope people who write poems on Twitter don't listen to this. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't like your poems. <laughs> I think that's fair. I don't that's know fair. what they're about. It kind of sounds it kind it kind of sounds like a poorly written short story that's even shorter than a short story. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Anyways, uh strong yeah. feelings. So yeah, so I've been writing some some poems just kind of like as a way to practice talking about the world of my zombies. And like, mm. it helps me brainstorm thoughts and ideas for things that I want to incorporate into the writing, like feelings about the world, 
uh, descriptions of things in the world. Uh, so whenever I get some some small amount of inspiration, like I have like this image in my head of something really desolate and depressing, uh, I try to describe it in the form of a poem. <laughs> Maybe um, we can read one sometime. I could yeah. read it for you. Yeah, you could you could narrate my poem. <laughs> my voiceover skills. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so there there we have it. Um, so I'm going to pitch a book for our book okay. club. This is a book club. Did you know? No. We're movies. talking about books. So our first book is going to be a movie. Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> I can do this. Okay. This is, and, you know, I, I want to start. I want to start simple. Anybody who's listening to this, your homework is you need, even if you've already seen it, you need to rewatch Shaun of the Dead. It's on Hulu. You can watch it on Hulu or somewhere else. I don't know. Or maybe you own it. Hopefully you own it. It's a good one to own. Shaun of the Dead. We're going to rewatch it. We're going to think about it. And we're going to talk about Shaun of the Dead in episode I, two. I love it. Um, and so th- hot tips while watching if you're going to watch again so things we want to know uh when could there be sex is there i don't remember if there is sex so that's interesting i don't remember do you remember dan well um or, wait wait sh- we can't talk about it don't spoil it yet yeah i wait, mean yeah there isn't <laughs> okay there we go well when could there have been sex when could you have done it better and uh what was a bullshit moment that just made no sense mm. what i want to hear you know from the crowd how how would would you go into a horde of undead nightmares uh, armed only with a cricket bat to save your ex-girlfriend who doesn't really want anything to do with you and her friends who don't like you mm. and then go rescue your mom who you do like but also her step your stepdad who you don't like no <laughs> and also would you do it with your best friend <laughs> no <laughs> All I would, good but I would endorse someone else doing Shaun it yes Um, and also, uh, social media is, it's how you talk to people these days, especially people who are far away. Um, I, uh, deleted my Twitter app today, so don't follow me on Twitter. (laughs) You can, I still have an account. I'll check it maybe once a month. Uh, but there's, there's a lot going on on Twitter that I just don't want to be a part of. So I've actually been using counter social. It's kind of like Twitter, um, but it doesn't have nearly as many assholes. Uh, And also, Elon Musk is not on counter social, and I'm pretty sure he would be blocked from using it. Or Trump. Trump is not on counter social. You're right. It's a win. Um, So if you want to try something new, I'm at Dan is writing. You can find me in there. Uh, Come come say hi. Follow me. Say hi. Uh, Tell me. Tell me where. Tell me. Tell me what's up. Um, also I'm going to include in the description, the link to our discord, which we're using right now to communicate. Speaking of future plans, I would love it if we could use the stage function of discord to do a live podcast and potentially bring people into the conversation, especially if we have a book assignment that, uh, I want to hear some perspectives about the book Mm. or book movie. (laughs) Or a book video game, whatever we're doing. <laughs> It'll be a good time. I don't, uh, that makes it sound really real that we might actually have people listen to this. We'll see. I, three people at least. Yeah. That's our the goal. goal. Our goal is three people. But yeah, Discord is probably the best because that's the one that isn't going to go anywhere. I like Counter Social. I can't tell you that it'll be there next week. <laughs> Twitter, I used to like. I was doing really good on Twitter. Had, the writing community was great. Oh, shout out to the writing community. I hope somebody from the writing community is listening. I really do. I love the writing community on Twitter, but counter social has a really good uh, writing community as well. And I'm now immersed fully in counter social. So like I've, they've got all my eggs, all my eggs are going there. So many one eggs. basket. One, That's a bad survival tip. Don't do that. <laughs> survival tip. Who needs more than one basket? No, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Put them all in one spot. It's it's easier to keep track of your eggs if you're all in one basket. Also, just don't eat eggs. Don't don't. eat eggs. No, they're gonna be also they're gonna be bad in the in the apocalypse. They're gonna be rotten. Oh God, you don't want those. 
Eat, eat beans. Get, get your beans. Eat beans. Eat beans. <laughs> a question that I want to leave with is, will there still be chickens in a zombie apocalypse or will they all have been eaten by the zombies? I don't know. I want to know. Um, do you think zombies or not zombies, chickens, zombie chickens. Do you think chickens? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, zombie chickens. I mean, that's a real thing. They do run around with their heads cut off. The U.S. government has planned for the contingency of zombie chickens. This is real. We'll talk about Are you serious. We'll talk about con plan 8888 in a later episode. But there is a wow. plan to deal with zombie chickens. From the real U.S. government. Real, real plan. <laughs> we'll talk about it. <laughs> uh, I'm here for it. The only other thing I could ask is please give us feedback. Find us somewhere. Even even if even if you're just send even if you're rating, please rate and subscribe. <laughs> give us at give us uh, no less than four point nine stars. <laughs> uh, this is important. So this is episode one. This is the pilot episode. Like we need encouragement. We need to know mm -hmm. that people want this. We be, we need to know that we're better than everyone else who has a zombie podcast. And this is how you let us know. And that's how you also let other people know so they can find it. Because we want we, we want to spread this. It's yeah. Like some kind of illness, a disease, a virus. We want, to give you, we want to give you a virus or a fungus. Could be a we fungal you, infection. We want to give you a fungal infection. <laughs> like, I had well, one of those in my toes once. It was not fun. Yeah, it happens. You know, sometimes <laughs> okay. you get a fungus. Um, the fungus well, I have an idea. Among us. Fungus among us. Is oh my zombies. god! Uh, Never mind. <laughs> uh, so when you leave a when you when you rate us, if you leave a review, please leave your hottest uh, zombie survival tip, and we'll read it. Yeah, on the show. Um, at least know, for the Apple, first hundred people. Apple <laughs> iTunes. Uh, where, where, where do you listen to podcasts, Leah? Because you don't use it. You don't use what I use. I use Apple Podcasts. I keep Spotify pure for music, yeah. and I do not use Apple Music. I'm a hybrid person. I use Spotify. I'm not afraid of of uh, tampering with the algorithm of my music because I know that podcasts are ranked separately from music in Spotify, but I understand that you are paranoid to uh, no, mess, it's up, like, mess up your metric <laughs> your metric not, playlist. <laughs> we're supposed to be ending this. But that is not why. Let the record be shown. It's like, you know, I'm one of those people who compartmentalizes their food on a plate. This is like, I don't want my mashed potatoes music to touch my peas, which is my podcast. <laughs> I love just... putting my peas in my mashed potatoes. <laughs> you I do. get some corn See? in there too. <laughs> gravy. It's a good time. Oh, God. But anyways, thanks everybody for listening to the first episode. The roughest episode. The worst episode. The worst one so far. Also, It only gets better one. from here. Also the best one so yeah. far. Yeah. Um, it's all up or downhill from here. It's we there's did a hill. It. There's a hill involved. So Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're ending it. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs> stay stay safe. Bye. Don't get bit. No. Or get bit by this podcast. Get take, get bit. Spread the virus. <laughs> Become a zombie. Or don't. Be survive. <laughs> Bye. Bye.